turn off my pantry light more than any other light in my entire house, tenfold. Anyway, it's that time of night, day, it's time to make dinner. What's for dinner? The age old question. Hey, um, I can't believe it's dinner time already. Where did the day go? I don't know. I figured I'd share with you the meals that we meal planned together last week or whenever it was. Now you're gonna see them all unfold. Easiest one first, I feel like, I don't know. I looked through and I thought, I have ground beef, not really frozen, but it was in the freezer. I just did it today, so I figured this would be a good one to start with because uh, I didn't take anything out because I did not realize how late it was. So the requirements for my meal plan or the meals that I feed my family is they have to be delicious, family friendly, easy to make, and also delicious. <laughs> okay, this is ground beef and rice skillet. And I thought we needed cooked rice and that was another catalyst. I was like, oh yeah, we got cooked rice. Does anyone else put leftover rice away in the can? No, just me. So did you know that day old rice is bad for you? It can give you some kind of bacteria. I don't know, salmonella, someone's calling me. <sighs> can you eat old rice? If rice is left standing at room temperature, blah, blah, blah. This one says leftover rice can be stored in the fridge for up to three to four days. I say a week, okay? Anyway, that's what we're doing. You need uncooked rice and all of the rest of the ingredients. Let's get cooking. I'm hungry and so are my children. Here's what you're going to need. Pretty basic ingredients. That's the other qualification that these meals need to have. Um, these are all things that I basically already have around my house or that I often have. Wish to share sauce, tomato paste, beef broth, tomato paste. Oh, just in case I didn't have enough. Uh, petite diced tomatoes. Just kidding. I never have those around my house. Bell pepper, onion, garlic, parsley. This is curly parsley. That's all I could find. Cheese, rice, beef, oil, salt, pepper. You know, let's do it. Quick, that is another requirement. I feel like this meal is gonna come together lickety split. I'm just taking my green bell pepper. I do the bottoms too, cause why not? No bell pepper left behind. So I'm just getting started on the mise en place. Cutting everything up before it's time to start cooking. So I'm just going to dice up a bell pepper. I'm sure you can use any color. Green is one of my favorites to cook up, especially when it's accompanied with onion. Speaking of the onion, I'm going to dice this up as well. The smaller you dice everything, the least likely you are to have your kids pick out the veggies but I'm sure some kids will still try. All right, we have garlic too, but I'm gonna get that going while the rest is cooking. Into a skillet or a pot, whatever the heck you have or want to use, throw in your ground beef. I'm sure you could use ground turkey, ground chicken, I don't give a crap, onions, and bell pepper. I like throwing it all in together. I find that it saves time and it cooks just as well as if you cook it separately. I have found that a lot of recipes are like, cook your meat, now set it aside, now cook it. Like, no thank you, I don't have time for that. All right, let that cook out. And in the meantime, I'm going to dice up my garlic. I have tried hacks in the past. One hack has worked where you just cut off the root and then the rest of the cloves kind of like just spill out, right? And then I saw this one, what do you do? You, what do you do? Uh, tip down and you just smash it. Oh gosh, maybe like this, I don't know. I don't know what they do. Maybe I'm not strong enough. Where's my knuckles? It's it, okay. In the video, it just shoots right up. Oh, no problem. But mm, that's not real life, I guess. And then I saw another one. I forgot what they did. Oh gosh, there it is. That's what they did. They just punched it. Yep, that works too. <laughs> but now you have cloves all over the kitchen. <laughs> They're literally everywhere. I don't. This is kind of ridiculous. <laughs> okay, well. It worked. I'm just going to do maybe like four cloves. I'm big on garlic. Do however many makes you happy. And then I'm just gonna mince them up. I have about seven cloves here. I kind of went overboard, but also not enough. Everything's looking really nice and cooked. So I'm just going to add all the garlic in there and let that cook out for, I don't know, about 30 seconds to a minute. While it's cooking, I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper. Oh my gosh, honestly, I could just eat this with rice. Banging, done. But we're gonna make it better. We're gonna jazz it up. 
One can of diced tomatoes. I have petite diced. One tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Three tablespoons of tomato paste. And I'm just gonna do whatever is oops, left in here. I don't feel like opening a jar and then not using all of it and then having it go bad because I will inevitably throw it in my freezer with good intentions but not label it and then end up throwing it away a year from now. Mm -hmm. Now it's time for the rice. One and a half cups of rice and about two cups of chicken, not chicken, beef broth, or you can just do one can. If I had my life together enough, I would have just done one can, but now I'm gonna have two cups of beef broth stuck in my fridge. All right, let this cook out. I'm gonna, you know, simmer it, let the rice cook and stuff, and yeah. By note, I'm adding a splash more of beef broth. I added obviously some off camera, but if you do have a can, I would just like add water. I don't think it's going to be a big deal, but uh, my rice is still needing some time to cook and it needs more liquid. So that's what I'm doing. Ooh, hoo, hoo, la 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 la. Everything looks really good. And I took a bite just to see if the uh, rice was done. It's looking nice. I'm going to take a couple handfuls of cheese and mix this in until it's melted and dinner is ready. I think I'm gonna eat this with nachos. I feel like it needs a good crunch. Look at that cheese pull. I also forgot garnish with some parsley, but I'm not sure my kids are going to enjoy that, so I'm just gonna do a little bit. This was a supreme. The woman I got this recipe from, Elise Ellis, I always link her meal plan below, absolutely divine. She shares on Instagram, and this is one of the most shared meals that she uh, put in her meal plan for this month. It's because it's simple, it's easy, it's family friendly. It is like the ultimate one pot meal, all the good things that we want. I would highly recommend making this one. It is top notch. Hello, I'm ill prepared. Dinner time creeps up on me again. It is dinner time. And we are making dinner. What are we making? That's a good question. I think today I planned on sticky chicken meatballs and Parmesan lemon zucchini with a white jasmine rice. Gotta make it sound fancy like everything else. So for the chicken meatballs, the only thing I pulled out, I did look at the recipe this morning and pulled out chicken. So hopefully that's all that I need to be prepared for. See, this is why I like crock pot meals or like the ones where, I don't know. Like I feel like the last What's For Dinner video, most of them was like, prepare most of it in the lull of the day and then slap the rest of it together in the evening. Okay, I don't know how much time I have. Let's see. Ground chicken. Oh yes, this is why I wanted to show. Yes, I forgot. This is why it's my favorite. I have chicken thighs, because you guys know I love chicken thighs. They have more flavor, they have more fat, they are juicy, hard to overcook, and uh, I think they're cheaper too. So I'm pulling out my, ooh, I'm pulling out my food processor because you need ground chicken for this. A couple pounds of ground chicken. Don't know what's in there, so don't ask me. You know, I put this in my dishwasher, and maybe that was a mistake. Or maybe I washed it, which is always a mistake. All right, pull out my food processor, because did you know that you can ground your own chicken? It's mind blowing, I know. I did it for the first time a couple years ago. I was like, this is, do you know how much they charge for a pound of ground chicken at the grocery store? An astronomical amount. You can do it yourself if you have a food processor. So I'm gonna ground my own chicken. The rest of the ingredients are pretty simple. We'll throw that together. They're meatballs, so we're gonna form them, throw them in the oven, and then I think the zucchini go in the oven? I could be wrong. Yeah, I'm wrong, skillet. Okay, this is gonna be kind of gross and also fun. Couple pounds of chicken thighs going in and coming out ground. All right, that is looking mighty gross. Check it. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Raw meat never smelled so bad. Oh my gosh, I need a lot of stuff. Hold on, I'll be right back. The recipe calls for all of this stuff. I'm debating whether I'm gonna mix it in here or in a separate bowl because this is pretty full, but oh well. I don't want to dirty two bowls. One cup of panko breadcrumbs. Awesome, don't have enough of that. Let me go get the breadcrumbs I made from scratch. <laughs> Fresh out of those two, but I do have some oatmeal, so I'm just gonna add a little bit there. 
Maybe a little more, I don't know. Little bit of fresh garlic in here. That's always better, but I, when I tell you I have no time, I'm not lying, okay? Onion powder is going in, and some cayenne pepper. That's probably way too much. Oh, and then also some salt and pepper. Different kind of pepper. Hits your tongue on a different level, you know? Did you know that? Did you know that spicy food, the spice taste, is really just pain receptors in your mouth? That is a true story, look it up. All right, bind that together. When I say bind, I mean blend. Woo! All right, that looks good. Smells weird still, let's do it. All right, I'm just gonna form these into balls and then throw them into the oven, probably like 350 degrees for 20-ish minutes. Oh, weird. Are these gonna taste like buffalo bites? Because that would be a dream come true. It actually doesn't taste at all like buffalo bites, but it was a dream come true, just a different dream. It was delicious, one of my favorite meals in this week's meal plan for sure. Delicious, I would highly recommend making it, it's good. I brushed mine with a little bit of oil, now I'm gonna throw them into the oven. Now we're going to make la sauce. Three ingredient sauce, I have mixed feelings about it because it includes my favorite ingredient and my least favorite ingredient, okay? Frank's Red, brown sugar, and that all sounds good and dandy until you add in apple cider vinegar. But here it goes. I'm gonna do one tablespoon there. Give this a whisk until it becomes nice and saucy. All right, I'm moving on Rascal Flats style to the side dish. I'm just cooking up some zucchini and I've made the executive decision to throw these into the oven. You could use a skillet, but my oven's already on, and uh, I don't know, I don't care. You can cut them any way you want, you know, discs, other way. I'm going to do, I don't know what you call it, fingerlings, like a good slice, and then just like that. Just like this, okay? That's what I'm gonna do, because that's what I care about right now. Well, I'm gonna grab my cooking sheet, which lo and behold, it's called a cooking sheet. Blew my whole brain apart, because my whole life I called it a cookie sheet. <laughs> Mull that one over. I'm gonna throw my zucchini on here. Fresh garlic is always better, but uh, time crunches, you know? So garlic, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and then I'm going to grab a little bit of lemon zest. Ooh, this zester is much better than my other zester. I, hopefully I don't get my knuckles in here. But I've read doing it this way is the proper way to do it rather than doing this. I don't know, this way just feels better because it's what I've been doing my whole life. It's like my whole life is a lie. I've never known how to do anything the proper way. So says the internet. But guess what, I've gotten it done. Figured it out. Get all that delicious lemon flavor on there. I'm gonna throw a little bit of oil on here and then give it a toss. Maybe I should have cut four. Oh well, I didn't, into the oven. When they said the sauce was sticky, they were not joking around. I let it reduce a bit on the stove and that's looking good, ready for my meatballs. All right, the meatballs came out. They are looking really nice. I had a tester meatball down there. Uh, delicious as it is. And I also tried it in la sauce. It tastes good, so I'm gonna throw it in the bowl. I may have reduced the sauce a little too much. I made it a little too sticky. But I'm still going to uh, drizzle it over the meatballs and coat them, toss them around. Yeah, I think we're good here. The sauce has a nice little zing to it. Not too much. You can always reduce the heat with the uh, hot sauce if that's your intention. All right, good stuff. And voila. A little green would go a long way with this. Maybe some green onions. I have some, but okay, fine. A little drizzle for garnish goes a long way. Ooh! Now it's Julia Child quality. Now it is restaurant quality. Now it is ready for a Food Network magazine. Hit me up Food Network, call me, somebody call them, let them know how amazing this looks. <laughs> the zucchini's out of the oven. 
I maybe could have ah, let it go a couple more minutes farther. I like a little more brown on it. Of course, I could like flip it, you know, let it go. Maybe have cooked it at a higher temperature, but I'm not that picky. I am just hungry. So we're gonna get to eating. Oh crud, you know what I forgot about these? Parmesan cheese. Sprinkle it over top, it'll melt a little bit because it is still hot. So the zucchini left a little uh, to be desired, but still good. I mean, it's zucchini, you know, there's not many ways to dress it up. Meatballs, great. Oh, so great. The sauce on top, I wish I wouldn't have cooked it. So I feel like I made caramel sauce, like it was so sticky. Oh my gosh, wow, clearly I did not edit these clips. Trying to make it Food Network quality for you guys. <laughs> kind of get the exact right placement for that green onion there. And that is perfect, magazine worthy for sure. Okay, Food Network magazine that is. So this one was good. I just served it with some rice and zucchini and it was a meal to be loved by many. It definitely made it into the recipe book because everyone enjoyed it. Flavors were great. I need to make these before they go bad in my fridge out there. It's happened before. I think they're still good. And you know what the deciding factor is? Sometimes they feel weird. No, these are perfect. Okay, let me prep the oven. I'm gonna do 400. Along with the corn, I'm just making this plain and simple. I was gonna do like Mexican street corn or something fun, but really my kids just like corn as it is with butter, salt, pepper. Keep it simple, especially with the veggies. I am gonna make some like roasted potatoes with some seasonings, maybe ranch, maybe dill, maybe some other ones, we'll decide. But the star of the show is this baked barbecue chicken thighs. Where are the chicken thighs? I've got a couple packs of these beauties that are burning a hole in my fridge. By the way, did you know Visa gift cards expire? <laughs> my kids keep asking, can I buy, can I buy, can I buy? I'm like, what? And they have almost expired Visa gift cards. I'm like, yes, please use them before they expire. Don't be like me. I have gift cards from like literally 15 years ago. It's not my fault. I don't know why I like say things like that. Okay, so uh, for this, I've never made this before. One time we were at one of Alex's aunt's house and she made us barbecue chicken. There's a mess in here, oh my gosh. Is this gonna be big enough? Let's do a big one. I'm running low on Ziploc. So she made us barbecue chicken. It was delicious. I'm pretty sure all she really had was just chicken and then basted it with barbecue sauce. I don't know, I never asked her for the recipe. It seemed pretty simple. Um, but today we're gonna elevate it a little bit and add some spice. Are you in? Say yes. Well, I hope it's good because I have a lot of chicken thighs in here just for fun. How much do you think that, I think this is five pounds. 4.86. Let's find out. Moment of truth. Man, 3.78. I'm, what the problem is, my muscles are just really sore from the other day. I mean, this does not feel like, I'm gonna try it again. I don't believe it, there's no freaking way. Maybe it's a 7.8 pounds? That would be ridiculous. That's a ridiculous amount of chicken. I don't, you know, okay, moving on. Doesn't matter. So to the chicken, I'm just gonna add some spices, okay? So we've got run of the mill garlic going in, just a little bit. Okay, and then some, ooh, nice and smoky paprika. Love paprika, you know what else we love? A good onion powder, straight in the bag. A little bit more, okay, that's good. Let's do some salt. Spices don't have calories, <laughs> right? And then pepper. My kids are sensitive to pepper, but not garlic, believe it or not. Well, I feel like this was a waste of a Ziploc bag, but I follow instructions to a T over here. Just says, put that in a, put the seasonings and the chicken in a bag, and it's like shake and bake. And I helped. All right, that's good. So now into a dish here. Do I grease this? Oh, it says to put down tin foil. I'm not gonna do that. I don't have tin foil. I don't care about it. I think I might need another pan for the seven pounds of chicken I have. That is some crowded looking chicken. Easy enough, once we have the chicken on, you're going to baste it with a half a, I think it's like one cup. I think this whole container has two cups 
of barbecue sauce in here. I'm using the sugar-free just to try it out, just for fun, but since I am making a lot of this, I might have to um, add in some of the normal Sweet Baby Ray's. Oh, hold on. Ooh, yeah, that smells just as good as the normal stuff. You know what that smell reminds me of? The bowling alley. Back in my high school days, barbecue sauce and french fries. Yes, please, take me back to the good old days. All right, not the whole bottle because we're going to baste some more on later. I'm just gonna make sure that everything has a nice even coating on here. I don't, this is gonna be a bubbling catastrophe. You're supposed to put it on a sheet pan or a cooking sheet. Did you know it's a cooking sheet, not a cookie sheet? My whole life is a lie. Throw this into the oven. How long? 50 minutes. Cheese and crackers. 20 minutes, you turn it. Baste it again, 30 more minutes. So let's do it. Now for the corn here, I just have it laid out on a cooking sheet. And I'm thinking about cutting it in half because my, uh, or not cutting it, just snapping it in half. My kids will fight over corn. They love it so much. I don't make it enough. I heard there's like hardly any nutritional value. I don't know, it's a vegetable. There's gotta be some nutrition in there. Maybe not once you cook it. Did you, fun fact, did you know the only vegetable slash fruit that ha adds more nutritional value after you cook it are tomatoes? Huh? Food for thought, all right. Anyway, they'll love this. Sometimes I boil it, sometimes I do it this way. It's been a while since I did it this way. So I'm just taking a stick of butter, adding some salt and pepper to this, as if there's not already salt in the butter, but you know. And then I'm just gonna mix that together. The butter softened, by the way. And then I'm gonna mush it all over the corn. You could do this the pretty way and just put a couple pats on top, but I find that it like rolls around and stuff. And then, you know, so I'm just gonna smother it all over the corn like so. Nice and simple, little messy. Have the kids do it if this is their thing. If they don't like sensory day at school, you leave them out of it. Fun fact, I was a chaperone sensory day one day at school that was a good time a vat of cooked oatmeal as soon as some kids stepped in they were like Bleh, about to puke i was like okay time to get out <laughs> shaving cream all over the place i think there was a pool of cooked spaghetti like wedding singer style you know all right be liberal with this all right don't be stingy not that you could be stingy with an entire stick of butter and only eight cobs. <laughs> but this is what makes it taste so good. Does this negate the nutritional value? Pretty sure the answer to that is no. Drop that into the oven. 400 degrees is what I have it set at. Took a while to get the butter off my hands. It was a nice moisturizer. Moving on to the potatoes or whatever you want to eat as a starch. I don't know, I'm doing potatoes tonight. Ooh, you know what would've been good? Sweet potato. Maybe I'll throw it in the microwave. A couple of them. Oh crap, how am I cutting these? Oh boy, I don't know what I'm doing. All right, let's do, let's do QBs. All right, you've seen me cut one potato, you've seen me cut a million. For the potatoes, I put parchment sheet paper down because uh, this pan is really embarrassing. And plus it's easy cleanup. So I'm throwing some oil. Is that too much? I don't think so, a little bit more. I have this Kinder's Buttery Steakhouse seasoning. Oh my gosh, it's absolutely delicious. So I'm gonna throw that on, because this meal seems to be all about the butter. Give this a toss and throw this into the oven too. Quick, easy meal, and it all cooks in the oven, and it'll be done in a while. You could do some ranch on these too, that'd be good. Mmm, ranch is always good on potatoes. No, I don't like ranch dressing though. Anyway, so these, the, uh, the pan of chicken had gone in the oven, and I'm just flipping them over I wish I had a bigger pan or put it on a sheet, but I just didn't even want to deal with the mess of cleaning up a cookie sheet. I guess I could have put down wax paper. Anyway, I flipped it over, put the rest of the barbecue sauce on there, threw it back in the oven for probably 20, 30 more minutes. The corn, I did leave in a little too long. That's what happens when you don't set a timer. And I have kids who are very good at distracting me. Okay, this is the final look of the chicken. Oh my... I mean, full chef's kiss. It was delicious. It was dreamy. It was tardy. How do you describe barbecue sauce? I just, like, I'm salivating because just looking at that, I'm like, oh, yeah. I actually have a really good meal in my crock pot for dinner tonight. Haven't shared that one with you. I don't think. It's real good. Maybe one day I will. Um, anyway, this chicken was delicious. 
Sorry, it was juicy and moist. I'm like choking on my saliva. Um, the potatoes were great. I always love throwing them in and roasting them. They just get crunchy. It's like eating a home fry. What's not to love? The whole meal, really the whole week of meals was good. Hey, it's dinner time again. Tonight for dinner, it's a little chaotic, a little late, a little delicious. It's gonna be good, I hope. Oh my gosh, okay. You need cooked chicken for this. We're making chicken enchiladas, Suzias. It's a thing, I don't, I don't know what thing it is, but it is something. So you need, I have about two pounds of cooked chicken here and I'm just dicing it up. You can shred it, you can use rotisserie chicken. I don't care what you use, just it has to be cooked pretty sure. You can use ground chicken. Oh, that would have been easy to just ground it up and then cook it like that. Whatever. I did it this way. The rest of the ingredients are pretty simple as well. I have Greek yogurt. I've got butter. I've got flour. I've got light sour cream. We're splitting this because, uh, you know, it's like healthier if you use Greek yogurt in replace of sour cream. So you can do that or go full sour cream if you want. Salsa verde, chicken broth, and then chilies, green chilies. That's gonna give it a little kick, a little flavor. I'm pretty sure that's all you, oh no, and then some cheese. Mozzarella cheese, and we should be good to go. So we're gonna, I'm gonna cut this up and then we're gonna mix it together on the stove. All right, I, and this is the pan I cooked the chicken in. I'm gonna throw half a stick of butter in there. Making a nice creamy sauce here. Once the butter is all melted, we do equal parts fat and flour, so about four tablespoons of flour in here. We're making a roux for the sauce, and this is just going to thicken it up. I have to tell you, just the like chicken drippings and this smells divine. I mean, it's basically gravy right here. Let that cook out for a minute here, just to get that flour taste out, and then add a couple cups of chicken broth or chicken stock. And if you were prepared, again, buy a can and that's two cups. This is half, this is four cups. Holy Toledo, it came up to a boil really quickly. Uh, we just want this sauce to thicken up. It says mix and heat for like five minutes, but mine's already almost done. It's been like 30 seconds. To this, I'm gonna mix in one cup of Greek yogurt. I'm basically a professional over here. That's a little more than a cup, but that's how I like it, cup and a quarter. Mix in one cup of salsa verde. And this whole jar is two cups. So just for reference, so about half the jar here. And then the green chilies. Do I do all of these? I think so. Oh my gosh, this, I love salsa verde. It's something I never had until I was an adult. And my goodness, is that stuff magical. Wow, speaking of magical, check the sauce. Check the sauce. I mean, this is homemade, you guys. Semi-homemade, could we call it semi-homemade? I would say homemade, yeah, good enough. All right, oh, take it off the heat, how about that? Just gonna chop up some cilantro over here. I forgot I needed it for the mixings. I thought it was just on top, but I love cilantro, so. Okay, so for the filling, I'm gonna throw all the chicken into a bowl. Ooh, that, that's nice and juicy. Oh, all the juices too, let's get those in there. I'm gonna throw the cilantro in here too. The rest of the salsa verde goes in. About a cup of sour cream is going in here. And a couple handfuls of mozzarella cheese. Fun fact, this is from my freezer. And look at it, it looks like it's fresh, looks like yeah, I just picked it up from the store. That's pretty cool, how about another handful for fun? Season every layer, I'm gonna throw some salt in here. And some pepper, I'm also not sure if I told you the way that I cooked my chicken, just right there on the skillet, I seasoned it with some salt, pepper, garlic powder, and onion powder. And then I threw it on the skillet, Season side down, let that cook. Season it while it's cooking, the other side, and then flip it back over. Works every time, beautiful, magic. That's it for the filling. So I'm just going to mix it all in together. Oh my heavens. Can you see this or is it shadowed too much? This looks a delish. I'm sure you could just eat it as is, maybe on some rice or whatever. Mm. Oh my gosh, yep. So good, smells great. Lots of good flavors in there. So now that I'm making a mess of my entire kitchen, Oh my gosh, this sauce. I've got a, a nice, I don't know, nine by 13 dish. I'm just gonna throw some of the sauce downtown. Schmear it all around. That is magic. And what I'm gonna do with the filling is just fill enough tortillas up until I run out and shove them in the dish and then we're gonna cook it in the oven 
too sweet. So I am ready to eat. I'm going to tell you something. I never was a fan of enchiladas before I started making them over and over again. My kids are coming around. Some of them love them. Some of them eat them because I make them. But um, otherwise, these were fan freaking fantastic. Once I have all the enchiladas in here, I'm going to dump the rest of the sauce. Oh, my. Uh-oh. Sprinkle on remaining cheese. I <laughs> made a mistake there. Oh, that's okay. We'll do a little bit more on top and then throw it in the oven. 25 minutes, it's at 350. And then I'm gonna sprinkle it with cilantro, my fave. Spoiler alert, it took more than 25 minutes. I don't know how long because my Google like never keeps the time. It's basically midnight. I'm going to top it with some cilantro. It's gonna be really tasty. So I definitely butchered the pronunciation of this dish. Someone did share the proper way to say it, but I didn't screenshot it. I could Google it right now, but I'm kind of in a rush, so I apologize. But sui? No, okay, okay, I guess I'll just Google it. Okay, so I Googled it. Enchilata suiza? Suiza. Suiza? Uh, you know what? I give up. I don't, you know what? I'm not Spanish. I'm not even trying to be... Spanish on Duolingo, okay? But I'm doing my best, and that dish was delish. Let me just tell you right now. Um, oh my gosh, I wish I could make it again. It was good, and it was easy to throw together, and the sauce was homemade. Okay, sorry, something happened with my mic. I'm back. This is weird. Okay, it was good. That's all you need to know. Time to make dinner again. This one is going to be, I feel like, super simple. It is Philly cheesesteak sliders. Oh my gosh, when's the last time you had a Philly cheesesteak? I actually had the pleasure of eating a Philly cheesesteak in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Um, did it meet my expectations? I don't, I mean, it was okay. I was like, okay, yeah. It didn't have the cheese whiz on it. I feel like that was an option. Um, but for me, I'm like blasphemy, okay? I know there are two types of people in the world, people who put cheese whiz on their Philly cheesesteaks and the people who do not. And I am in the camp that does not. It kind of hurt me. Okay, so initially I had this recipe, but I also have another recipe. It's like roast beef sliders. So in my head on my grocery list, I didn't have flank steak. So I was like, dang, flank steak is expensive. Let's just do the roast beef, you know? So I bought the roast beef, but then I really just want a Philly cheesesteak. So, so eh, needless to say, I went back to Costco and boy did that hurt because holy cr I don't even want to look at the price of that. Not that we're going to use all of it, so it'll be two separate meals, maybe a little bit more, but let's get cooking. I also, I'm going to look for another bell pepper. Pretty simple. Okay, we've got sliders. We've got some butter, fat. We've got some steak. Steak is so expensive. And then, uh, you know, onion, pepper, cheese, pretty self-explanatory, let's whip it together and eat. Oh, well, I'm gonna look for another bell pepper. I know I bought two, I can't find the second. Did I mention cheese? Oh, no, cheese provolone, cheese, we gonna, we're gonna need to, okay, let me just show you everything real quick. That's it, this is, if you had any question, question no longer. I'm going to get the miso en place ready and just get these, this bell pepper, singular bell pepper. Oh my gosh, it doesn't even look good, it looks sad. I must have got this from Target. Not great produce options, but you know what? It is convenient. So I'm just going to cut these, julienne them, uh, pretty thin slivers here. And since they are going on sliders, I will probably cut them just one time in half so they're smaller. Man, I really wish I had two. I feel like the vegetable is the best part of the Philly cheesesteak. I'm gonna cut the onion similar in shape to the pepper, so I just cut it once here and then like so. This way everything has a nice even cooking time. And I'm gonna do a whole onion because I really like onions and honestly, really wish I had a second green bell pepper. It's gotta be green, right? Does it though? I don't know, for me it does. All right, check out this beauty. That is a beaut, oh, <laughs> slamming doors and stuff. I know, it's super windy outside. There's a storm a brewing. Okay, you're supposed to cut against the grain. So the grain is going this way. I'm gonna cut this this way. I don't know how much this weighs. If I had to guess, I'd say it weighed a flank. So I'm just gonna cut this into nice thin strips. Oh, you know what? The first and last time 
I cooked with flank steak. I did a, I think it was in a what's for dinner video. One of the best meals. Oh my God, restaurant quality, super simple. It had, I think, similar ingredients, flank steak, onion, peppers. I think they were red peppers. I don't remember what the dish was called. I'll try to link it. I'm real bad at that. But it was delicious. Served it with rice. Wish I made double portion slash wish we didn't have guests over that day so we could have eaten more of it <laughs> because it was so good. Uh, would not have wanted to make double portion simply because of the cost, but otherwise, great meal. Hold on, I actually, I bet you it's in here. Oh, there it is, pepper steak. That's what I made, ooh, yeah. I'm gonna take the big ones and just cut them in half. Easier to manage this way. Oh my gosh, there is a bird outside that is making noises that sounds like, mom, mom. So I'm like, oh my gosh, who was screaming for me? <laughs> Someone's always screaming, mom. Okay. I have a really hot pan here. Hopefully it's hot enough. We want a good sear on the meat as soon as it hits the pan. I've got a little bit of oil in there. Oh, we're gonna season this. I'll just season it when it goes in. Yeah, mm, mm. you do what you want. I'm gonna season it when it goes in. Could have had a better sizzle there. Some salt and pepper. Keeping it simple here, but I did. I should have got a bigger pan, but I wanted to use the one that would give it a good sear. So, you know, you work with what you have. While that is cooking behind me, it's only gonna take a, a few minutes. I'm going to cut into these. Oh my gosh, it's so humid today. It's gonna rain all day. It's actually gonna be really nice tomorrow. Okay, I just wanted to make sure it wasn't sticking. So just take a bread knife, that's the best thing to do, and then cut it. This takes precision, okay? Cut it straight through the middle. I never do this. Great. All right, let's do the best we can. Oh gosh, oh boy. Yeah, that's not even. All right, well, it's good enough. That's what we've got going and that's gonna be great. Back to the meat. Give that a mix. Well, the sear could be better, I'm not gonna lie. That's okay though. What we're gonna do here is just spread some mayonnaise all around, as little or as much as you want. Not a huge fan of mayonnaise. Ooh, but I think we're gonna need more than that. That bread really soaks it up. Little here, little there. Here we go. Paint a nice little picture for your mom. I wasn't filming. <laughs> All right, I added a little bit of Worcestershire sauce in here. I don't know, just a, just a little splash. And it's gonna rich in that beefy flavor we've got going with that beef. And now I'm going to take the same skillet and cook up the veggies. I like to season every layer, so we've got some salt in here and some pepper, keeping it simple. And then cook these until they're nice and soft. Just a few minutes. Veggies are nice and cooked and soft, so time to assemble. All right, I'm just gonna throw all of the meat on here, a little bit of the juice, and then layer on the vegetables. And this alone looks delicious. Oh my gosh, I could just eat this. I mean, we will be soon. <laughs> And then layer on top some cheese of your choice, provolone. What I choose, nice and creamy, nice and melty, nice and Philly cheesesteaky. I'm gonna throw the top on here. Which way does it go? And then I have a few tablespoons of melted butter here. I'm going to coat the top of this. And every time I go to the store, I kept trying to remind myself to buy tin foil. Never did. So you're supposed to wrap this in tin foil, cook it for, who knows, like 15 minutes or so, and then take the tin foil off and then cook it for another, I don't know, five minutes or so. So you can do that. I'm just going to throw it in and hopefully it gets all melty and delicious. Butter, yes, please. So there we go, 375 degrees in the oven. I just took it out of the oven. Nice ooey gooey cheesiness. Oh, I'm gonna crack into this guy. Maybe, I don't know, plate it, but. Fat chance, honestly. All right, check it, hold on. Ooh, you know what would be really good on this? Mushrooms, or is that blasphemy? I don't know. I don't know the rules. There are no rules in cooking. There she is, just a walking down the street, singing do up diddy. Looking pretty good. Here, can we get some of that? Let me throw an onion in there, make it look Food Network quality. We got some drippy cheese, and there she blows. You guys, this was so dang delicious. I also brought, you'll see on Saturday's video, I made the roast beef 
sliders um, in that video that I brought to a get together. I think I made these. This must have been Super Bowl Sunday or something. I don't remember. But these were oh so good. But if you are on a budget, the roast beef ones were equally as delicious um, without spending an obscene amount of money on the flank steak. So if you're looking for something similar, roast beef will do you just fine. I'm sure you can use other cuts of meat too, but I'm not very well versed in the meat world. But that cheese pull was divine and delicious. Then these were packed full of uh, meat. So that was a win there to have them not be so skimpy. And, oh, sorry, I keep choking on my saliva about the enchilada suiza, suiza, sui. These were good. Philly cheesesteak sliders. I'd eat them three times over. If you asked me, and I would say yes, please. I'd also use my manners and say please. Anything with peppers and onions, I'm really in. That's all it takes. I'm trying to use this like scrunchy towel to dry my hair. I don't know. I don't think it's doing anything different. Anyway, it's brownie fry, brownie Friday, Friday. I'm so hot. I'm so freaking hot. I gotta put my hair back up. Well, today for Brownie Friday, I only have a quarter of the, ugh, I only have a quarter of the ingredients out. I feel like I just wiped it down, but anyway, uh, Oreo. I don't know where the recipe is. It we need Oreos. Okay, I just got excited. Big cup. <laughs> Any reason I have to pull this out makes me happy. I love it. I love my KitchenAid. I feel like it's an old love. It's like an old flame that has been reignited. I still, I'm not sure about this. Okay, oh my gosh, all right. Let's mix these brownies up. The official name of them are, I don't even wanna scroll up to, to view it. I'll tell you after. <laughs> Oreo truffle brownies, okay, there it is. So, there are three layers to this. It is a labor of love, but Brownie Friday only comes around once a week, so you gotta do something special. Okay, into this mixer goes one cup of softened butter, and my friends, this butter has softened at room temperature because it's so dang hot in here. Okay, it's soft enough, I feel like. We'll, we'll figure it out. Oh my gosh, and I just threw my, my nine by 13 dish away because it was just too far gone. Oh man. I need to go to Home Goods and get another, another one. Butter and sugar. Holy crap! My shit gets messed up. Kids! Oh my gosh, where the You know, I recently put this in the dishwasher. I don't usually put stuff like this in the dishwasher, but nowadays I'm thinking it's moral of the story. Like, I have to wipe it out. There's still crap in it. What is that? Rice? Sour cream? Anyway, I used to never put stuff like this in the dishwasher, but now I'm like, I'm just like throw everything in the dishwasher. I don't even care. I don't have time for anything. Two cups, two cups of sugar. Anyway, threw it in. I have to wipe it. My, did I run the dishwasher? Maybe that's a problem. Who cares? Two cups. <laughs> that's a good ratio right there. Oh gosh, I can taste it. Tastes good. Someone told me these were recalled because there was like lead on them or something. I'm just. I'm gonna take the risk, okay? I don't know, I just bought it. I feel like if it was recalled, I would have been notified. Oh, I gotta plug it in. Smells like hamburger. Oh gosh, what's on it? Some kind of green substance, spinach. What did I mix that was green? Oh man. Okay, cream that crap. <laughs> I just love looking at creamed butter and sugar. It's just something so magical. Okay, it's looking nice and creamy, nice pale color in here. I'm gonna wipe the sides down and then incorporate four eggs. Seems like a lot, but here we are. You're probably supposed to mix in between each addition, but I don't care. Cause I don't dance. Also going to throw in a splash of vanilla while that's going. Whoa. Give you a peek from this angle. What a dream. Now for the dry ingredients, probably mix this separate, but I just added some salt, half a cup of cocoa powder, and then one 
and one third cup of flour. Wait, no baking soda or anything? Doesn't seem right. All right, well, that's what it says. Here we go, let her rip. To grease the pan, I'm just gonna take the skin of the butter and just rub the excess all over. And that should suffice. Check these brownies out, man. I saw a meme the other day, it was like, notice how when you say girl, it's something exciting and fun, and when you say man, it's something disappointing, like, oh man. But when you say girl, you're like, check this out, girl. I got you, girl. I thought that was pretty funny. All right, once that's all plopped down, I'm gonna throw it into the oven 350 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes. And you know we have to taste the batter, make sure it holds up to our Ghirardelli standard. So salmonella, I dare you. Delicious. Into the oven. Okay, working on that second truffle layer, the Oreo layer. It calls for one package of Oreos, but I have a family size package, so I'm gonna leave some out also to crush some on the top. But I have my food processor out. I told you, labor of love. Lots of cleaning up, lots of washing utensils. Although you could do this in a Ziploc bag to make it easy. That seems pretty full to me. Maybe one more. If it's too full, the food processor won't deal with it. Blend these up. Okay, this is looking pretty good, and I think we can all agree this is the best part of an ice cream cake, that like Oreo crumb layer. Uh, anyway, I don't like ice cream. So, we're gonna add some cream cheese, and I realized I left mine in the outside garage. Okay, it's been a while, I had to put the baby down and he's already up as you can see. So the brownies are nice and cool over here. And you know what I was thinking? Um, one way to jazz them up, maybe add some espresso powder in there, right? I like doing that. So to the Oreos, I'm going to add a little more than half a stick, about six ounces of cream cheese. Okay, that's looking. Great, nice, and smooth. It's supposed to be smooth or crumbly. Well, it's definitely not crumbly, so there we are. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be smooth. <laughs> okay, so two things I wanna say about this. One, they were delicious. Two, if you throw them in the freezer to cool, kind of bring them to room temperature. But Well, I don't know, if, unless you like the top gets really hard because it's just pure chocolate. Maybe that's why it calls for two different All right, times. here's what it looks like. Looking good so far, enough. I've got two cups of chocolate chips. It's supposed to be one and a half of something and half of something else, but I don't know. I just have semi-sweet. And then one tablespoon of shortening. Okay, I'm just gonna throw that in and that's just gonna help it melt a little bit. Okay, microwave, 30 second intervals. All right, so this is looking, well, I don't know. It's looking fine, but it's smelling even better. And I am going to drizzle this chocolate mixture over top. Oh, look at that. I feel like the first time I made this was like for Alex's birthday or Father's Day, like so many years ago. And it made an impression, it was delicious. Okay, I have to, I have to show this to you. The chocolate layer on this picture is like five million times thicker than whatever the heck I'm spreading out here, you know? All right, anyway, I'm gonna spread this out to the best of my ability. Pinterest lies to us. To be fair, so does YouTube. Who can we trust? Julia Child, that's who. Oh yeah, find me. How is this your first time seeing that picture? It's been there for... No, I see you. All right. I know, Amanda. I, get, I used to get that all the time. All right, that movie came out when I was in, uh, when I looked like her too, a lot. Anyway, I'm crumbling some cookie topping on top, some of this Oreo. I crushed up about seven Oreo here, and that seems to be way more than what I need. Throw this in the fridge however long you can wait, okay? Just let it set, and then you'll be able to cut it. So nice. Also, let it set, but like bring it to room temperature before you fully eat it. Otherwise, you'll get like the crunch on the top. I don't know. It's just, it's delicious either way. Have you ever had Mississippi mud? Plan to make that in my next What's For Dinner video. Let's meal plan soon, okay? Because I'm really excited to eat that. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and hanging out. Hope you enjoyed all the meals I shared with you. If you want to subscribe, put a little happy in your day. I'll see you next time. Bye.